my bags are packed, I'm ready to go. And I gotta hop on, I don't know what kind of transportation, but I'm getting out of the city today. Today, I'm taking a bus to a train, and I'm supposed to be taking a train a few hours north up the coast to a highly recommended place, the home of port wine, called Porto. Days with Jordan the Lion, and Ditch in Lisbon begins now. All right, no line, let's go get some. So these are what they're known for. They actually invented these in the 1830s. These are called Passis de Bellum. And the secret recipe is so secret that everything's handmade. Some people mix it, take it back to a secret room, knock on a door, hand it through the door, and they make them in there. So only three people here have the recipe, and I just ordered two for the road. I got here at the right time, now it's packed. All right, we got some. Truth be told, I had some last night, and I didn't film it, and they were awesome. These are actually world famous, and like I said, every time I try and go in there, the line's so long. So I, I went last night, and it was totally worth it. And when I walked out the door, I just couldn't believe it was empty, so I got another one. These things are so good. Only $1.10. Now I basically have to take a bus to the airport and hop on a train from the airport. Well, we're pretty much at the train station, so now we got to get a ticket and take about a three hour plus ride to Porto. All right, well, we got our ticket to Porto. It was $24.70, so roughly probably about 30 bucks. So probably be about the same rate on the way home. I leave in about 30 minutes. And uh, my alternative was, I was like, if they don't, if the ticket's gonna be too much, I might just walk downstairs and rent a car, but we didn't come to that. So this whole train platform and everything's kind of built into a mall. So I think I might go down and get a sandwich before we leave, just because it's gonna be like a three hour plus ride. And they generally, at least in my experiences on these trains in Europe, they don't have anything to buy on there. So let's get something now. All right, that's what I got for the road, a little ham and cheese sandwich. I have a few minutes, so I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. Well, that is what I wanted to show you. I may or may not do it while I'm here in the country. I don't know. You guys know I hate the fear of heights and everything, so. But how cool is that? My thing is I don't know how long it goes. I don't know how far it goes or whatever and how I'll feel once I get up there, but I wanted to at least show it to you since we were over here. Those ski lifts, how cool is that? Let me zoom in on it. So my only real complaint with Lisbon is that they don't have a multicolored volcano looking fountain for me to take a picture in front of. Whoops, or maybe they do. Alrighty, let's hightail it back to catch my train. All right, let's go up to the train. There she is. <laughs> All right, gang, that three hour plus train ride is done. We're in Porto. Let's go drop off my stuff and go exploring. All right, here's my first look of Porto. Let's go find where I'm staying. Fresh meat. Well, the place that I'm staying is called Rock and Porto Hostel, and it's all rock and roll themed. So the rooms are named like Rolling Stones, Pearl Jam, things like that, and uh, the lockers are all like, 
identified by album covers. <laughs> See, there's the Guns N' Roses room. So I'm in the Pearl Jam room. Originally, they put me in the Rolling Stones room and I looked around and I said, that's a lot of beds. I thought I had an eight bedroom, not a 16 bedroom. So she double checked and found out I was not in the Rolling Stones room. I'm actually here. And so you're probably wondering, why are you staying in a hostel? I thought you were tired of that. Well, I didn't know what time I would make it to Porto with it being such a long train ride. And I just figured, you know what? It's probably better that I don't do an Airbnb where I have to meet somebody to get the keys and get let in and everything. Hostels, there's always somebody here and they can give you good tips on how to get around the city, where to go, things to do. I already have a whole list of things I want to do right now. So we're just going to drop off my bag, put it in my locker, boing, and get out of here. And I'm going to give a free plug. I bought this, uh, this waterproof day bag, G for free bag, 15 bucks on Amazon, supposed to be waterproof, perfect. I used it. So far, every day on this trip, I haven't had any problems. It's super lightweight, it is water protective, and it bundles all up into this little bag. That's actually the pocket in the inside, so very compact. And really, since all I'm taking is my night camera and my deep lens and an extra battery, I don't need much. The little pouch that it folds up into is basically, the whole thing folds up into the inside pocket right there, so that's what it looks like when it's done. So before we leave, I'll show you this. I just opened this up and was pleasantly surprised to find a little balcony. All right, we're gonna head into the city. I'm staying about eh, 15 minutes by bus outside of it, but check out the architecture here. Let's go check out this statue over here on top as well. Nice, very nice. So something really interesting happened on the train ride here. I was actually sitting next to a girl who's from China and she's studying in the UK. So after a while, she started noticing that I was editing videos and started telling me, well, at first she said, are you a YouTuber? And I said, yeah. And then she said, I'm studying that kind of media in school. So I'm totally fascinated by what you do. And she told me that if I ever want to come to China, she will invite me and be my tour guide through Beijing and Shanghai, so I may have to do that. So this park that I just walked into, it says was here since the 1800s and there's some flower beds here that date back to the 1890s. Oh yeah, I love this kind of stuff. They're all playing cards. Wow, check out that place. It's very unique. Look at all the great architecture, just the windows and everything, just the... God, I love this, it's Art Nouveau. Well, I'm gonna give the Porto transportation system a major fail because I've been waiting out here for 20 minutes for a bus. I finally just called an Uber. I'm tired of waiting. So I had to pop in here today, guys. This is extremely famous. This is like one of the coolest, most well-known, I guess it's like a metro train stop. And I'm sure you can tell why. It pretty much tells the entire city in mosaic form all the way around this place. Isn't that incredible? I could possibly show you everything as much detail as I want because of how much I'm gonna do today but I think you guys will get the idea if you want to see more you're just gonna have to come to Portugal and then here's the actual train depot part now let's hit our next stop and it's called the St. Bento train station well, when you see this monstrous line, you know we found what we were looking for. First place I went to stop was Majestic Cafe. All right, I am next. This is almost like a less colorful version of the Madonna Inn in a way. Look at those chandeliers. 
right, I get to sit back here. Cool. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna have coffee or if I'm gonna eat or what I'm gonna do, but I'm loving the ambiance here. Look at that, I'm getting a tablecloth and everything. doesn't want to eat their meal listening to Lionel Richie. Let's be serious. Perfect choice. Oh my god, this piano player is unbelievable. He starts out with Lionel Richie and then follows it up with Phantom of the Opera. Dude, I'm loving this. All right, I decided on the spaghetti bolognese. I think this might have the most flavor I've ever had in anything in my life. One bite and I could just taste about a billion bursts of flavors. It's amazing. From the time that I got here till now, They've had a line out the door, so I asked the guy at the front, I said, do you ever have a dead time of the day? And he said, yep, when we close. Wow, look at the outside. I didn't even realize they had an outside. So when I booked this trip, I actually didn't know they were having a massive festival here that apparently everybody has come to the city for, so I guess I'll get to enjoy that. Oh, cool. Look at that, right there in the dead center. Well, speaking of right in the dead center, the thing is monstrous. You know I can't see a cow or a bull without filming it. Especially one on a surfboard. That is a perfect storefront. How awesome. I love that. What is this pink monster up here? Weird. Make, looks like it's made out of all that tubing, like and Willy Wonka when Augustus gets sucked up through those tubes. It's kind of what it looks like. So the girl on the train said, oh, you have to go check out the McDonald's in Porto. And I go, I'm not really looking for a McDonald's. She goes, no, it's one like design awards. It's really famous. So maybe we'll stop and see it. Now, speaking of stopping and seeing, you think we're gonna walk by this and not stop. You're nuts. I think that's a church, actually. This is the side of it. I'll go around and show you the front in just a second, but check that out. Look at all the detail in there. That is amazing. See, he's kissing the feet. So many stories in there. So this is actually the chapel of St. Katarina and it's from the 18th century. But they said all the tiling that you see was added in the, uh, the 19th century and there's actually a really amazing piece of art on the inside we're gonna go take a look at. Shall we? Let's do it. Well, I didn't realize there'd be a service going on, so maybe we'll come back tomorrow. But wow, that was pretty cool on the inside, right? Oh my gosh, another freaking cow? Heck yeah. I hear you, dude. I'm a visitor here myself. I wouldn't say it quite like that, but I do agree. Wow, that's cool. Check out the corner of that building right there. We'll go down there tomorrow. What is this? Good grief. Never seen one of those before. The magic tran? Wow, take a look at this beauty. This is a civil parish here, or was a civil parish, called Santo Ildefonso. I'm not even sure it's open, but dang. We're definitely gonna have to get the good lens out for this one, aren't we? Look at all that. There's, look at that figure way up in there. There's the bells on either side. Look at all that. 
Isn't that a magnificent piece? What great architecture, my gosh. Looks like it actually is open. I just saw somebody walk in, so we're gonna go do the same. All right, let's go on in and check it out, right? They have that gate over there open too, so maybe there's something going on over there we need to check out. This church was built in the first half of the what century? The 17th, 18th century? Yeah, 18th century. 1932, they put the tiles on. Eh, they're starting to wear away a little bit, but it still looks good to me. Wow, this is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. When they're having a service, I try and get a little bit of footage and get out of there just out of respect. I just, you know, I feel like you guys will want to see some of the experience as well. It's very touching to be in there, so I try and keep it to a minimal. Now we're going to go check out a theater that's pretty close by that I read about online. It looks pretty cool. Always love a fountain, you know me. Let's go check out this monument up here. So the statue says it's in honor of Pedro V, and the reason it's here, it says right here, is that according to tradition, the square owes its name in the battle between the Christians and the Moors. Originally, one of the gates of the city wall opened onto the south side and was demolished in the 18th century when this part of the city underwent many changes. You can see the king's crown over here on both sides. Now this is actually the theater I was talking about, the Teatro Nacional. I love those figures at the top and I heard that the inside's really amazing but it's actually like a functioning movie theater so you almost have to like go in to see a movie to take a look at the inside which who knows I may do. I don't know if I'll be able to understand any of it, probably all in Portuguese, but maybe just to get a glimpse of the inside, it might be worth it. So the theater's actually closed, but this is the lobby. Check out how beautiful that is. And they actually, I was wrong, it's not movies, it's actually like theatrical performances, so. Beautiful. So here's a little bit of the story to the theater we just went into. It says the first theater was built at the end of the 17th century, credited to the Italian architect Mazzanici. It was destroyed by fire in 1908, and the new theater, which is this one, was designed by the architect Marquis de Silva, who introduced architectural innovations to Oporto. This is the side of it. Check that out. Look at the figures on the side. I can never get enough of Art Nouveau, man, I'm telling you. I could just turn my entire life into Art Nouveau if I could afford to. Check out this old hospital right here. This little narrow thing right here. Look at this old church, isn't that great? This guy in red's been doing his yoga. Now I'm just wandering back alleys. I don't even know where I'm going now. I'm just having fun getting lost. You don't see many of those anymore. Well, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed what you've seen of Porto so far. Come back and see me tomorrow, and we'll go in there. I swear, I'm even gonna end the vlog right now. This isn't even multiple vlogs in one day. We're gonna come back 
right here tomorrow, the Porto Cathedral. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. If I was a guy, I would try my luck. When I was a guy,